Gerald Seib is executive Washington editor at the Wall Street Journal. He joins us now from Washington. Jerry, good morning. Good morning. Uh, the president has previously said that um, repeal and replace would, uh, would have to happen at the same time. Now this, this idea has been revived of the replacement later on. What are the implications? Well, look, I, I think it's a, a potential way out of the mess that we're in right now in the sense that everybody in the Republican uh, caucus in the Senate can certainly agree to repeal Obamacare. The problem with it is that repeal and replace implies the second step involves negotiating with Democrats, and that involves making concessions to the Democrats. That probably involves spending more money on health care than conservatives want. So the repeal part sounds very attractive. I wonder, though, how many of those conservatives who are pushing it now are really going to be that enamored of the idea when it comes to uh, negotiating with Democrats on the replace part. But, Jerry, doesn't, the whole, doesn't repealing it right away create a lot of confusion? Well, that's the danger. I mean, if you repeal it right away, you create more uncertainty in the insurance markets. Now, the people who are pushing this idea are saying, well, we'll, we'll make it a, maybe a two-year phase in for the repeal, so that gives us plenty of time to negotiate a replace part. And by the way, two years takes you past the 2018 midterm elections. So they're saying we can keep the markets intact by making the repeal part a, a long phase in, and that gives everybody plenty of time to negotiate the replace part. It kind of puts a gun at everybody's head that says, essentially, you got to figure out a way to replace this because it's coming to an end at a date certain. You, you know, you're talking about concessions with Democrats. There's also this idea of just with constituents and governors back in states where, Republic, where the Republican senators are now visiting with their constituents and governors. How much of an impact will they have on what we see? Well, you know, ask the Obama administration how that went in the summer of 2009 when Obamacare was being debated and in August town halls, you know, opposition exploded. So these things don't necessarily improve with time back home. And you're having a lot of Republican senators who are back home now trying to calculate whether the political thing to do here is to vote for something that, that's unpopular or to be criticized for doing nothing. And that's really a bad choice, but that's essentially where they are now. And that's, by the way, where this repeal and replace idea comes from. It's a way to get out of that jam. Jerry, USA Today analysis finds that the president tweets more about fake news than actual policy. What do you think this means for the GOP agenda? Well, look, I think that's, it's become a, a, a distraction. I think people know more about what President Trump thinks about Morning Joe than they, they know what he thinks about the health care bill being negotiated in the Senate. And I'm not sure why that's beneficial to the White House. Uh, you know, there were some good things that happened over the last couple of weeks uh, for the administration. A veteran affairs uh, a re, a, a reform bill that got passed through the House, some immigration legislation. A victory in Iraq, where Mosul was, uh, was uh, taken over by the Iraqi government with American help, ISIS was pushed out. People heard very little about any of those things because of the focus on the issues the president raises on social media. So I, I, it seems like a distraction uh, on many mornings. But, Jerry, this seems more than just a Washington thing. You wrote a couple weeks ago about civil disobedience, uh, the discourse, uh, excuse me, around the country. We're seeing today, we're covering live over the weekend on CBSN, mm -hmm. states from Illinois to New Jersey to Maine that are shutting down. So what's the message for these state legislatures as well, where Republicans are pitted against Democrats and can't seem to work together? Well, what you, what you have is kind of a breakdown in civil discourse and civil debate. And when people are yelling at each other, they're not very able to come together and figure out what to do about some of these problems. And so I think the tone is not just a tone problem. It's actually a substance problem in the sense that not here in Washington, but as you say, in state capitals, it's stopping people from having the argument and then coming together at the end and figuring out what the consensus or the compromise solution is. That's certainly going on with health care right now. It's going on with the budget in many states. It's going on in, in political discourse in general general in the in the US and I think that is increasingly clear and it's increasingly bothersome to people but I think politicians have to step forward and do something about it not just bemoan the fact all right Jerry Seib thank you for joining us Jerry sure happy to be with you